We're continuing our absolute value inequalities. I want to make a very strong suggestion that before you start, there's a video on graphing compound inequalities. And basically, it's a compound inequalities worksheet where you graph all of the possible and um, and or types of equations and graphs because if you get confused on anything at the end it's probably in relation to the and or graphs so this uh, video and worksheet just is extra credit to not extra credit but extra source that's going to help you make sure you get that down because you can see here um, when we have less than it's an and when you have greater than it's going to be an or problem so you're going to have to know how to graph the and and ors which is going to be explained um, thoroughly in this video so like I said as we progress forward if you struggle with the graphing at the end you need to just go back and rely on that video it'll help you um, work your way through the rest of it okay so when we had um, absolute value we're going to have write it exactly the same like we did before and then x this time we're going to flip the inequality and make it negative when it was an equal sign there was no sense in flipping it because you can't flip an equal sign but for inequalities write it exactly the same as it is without the absolute value bar and for the other one uh, you flip the sign and make it a negative so we're going to graph these two right here and I'll try to do my best this is going to be a uh, positive 2 x is less than positive 2 and then x is greater than negative 2 and then I go back to the original problem to uh, determine if my problem is an and or an or and we can see by definition it's going to be an and problem and the easiest way that I remember that is or problems point to the right. Point to the right and or for right. Okay, so this is an and. An and means where do the two overlap? Okay, and or means if it was ever uh, what part of the line what part of the number line is colored on or okay so that's kind of the idea so for an and problem and it's and because the original inequality was less than I want to know where the two overlap the two overlap right here in this region so interval notation as I name it left to right is a parenthesis negative two and it ends at positive 2 with a parenthesis. So this is our solution. All right, let's look at number 12. Try to get some of this stuff out of the way. Write it the first time as is without the absolute value, and the second time we flip this inequality symbol and make it a negative. Okay, now recall that if this bar is there, it means it's a bracket. So x is greater than 5, greater than or equal to 5. So come to 5 with a bracket. And I say this. This one is less than or equal to. It will have a bracket as well because of that equal to bar. Bracket, shade it this way. Now, the original problem, it points to the right, so it's going to be an or problem. So or means if it was ever colored, I name it. Now, it's very specific when you name interval notation that you name it left to right. So the very first thing on the left that's colored is an arrow to the left, which is negative infinity, and it stops at negative 5 with a bracket. That's right here. I have this gap. So I represent the gap with a U for union. And then I'm still naming the colored part. Well, the colored part is a bracket on the 5, and it goes to infinity. Remember that your infinities will never have brackets because you can't ever get there. They just keep going on and on and on. So let's look at number 13. 
absolute value. Uh oh, we said absolute value can't be negative, but that's not an equal sign. If it was an equal sign, I would just stop and say no solution. But since it's an inequality, I need to think about it. And my thought process is that no matter what this is, it's absolute values. And absolute value is always positive because it's talking about distance. This negative 3 is a negative number, and it will always be negative. My question is, is a positive number always bigger than a negative number? And I would say yes, and at all times. So yes, that's true all the time. So I would represent that as it's true for every thing on the line. So I need to name that in interval notation. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Let me take a different approach at that. Just in case you didn't recognize this, um, let's say I didn't notice it, and I didn't know it was one of my special cases. Then I would set this up, and I would say write it one time exactly as it is, and the next time flip it and make it the opposite. Well, the opposite of a negative 3 is a positive 3. It points to the right, so it's an or. So I could um, also do this, and I would see that. That's a parenthesis, greater than negative 3 means that's this one. And for this one, x is less than 3 would be this. And or says if it was ever colored, you name it. Well, we got to start left to right. The very first thing on the left is a negative infinity. And it's colored all the way up to this blue, which is positive infinity, which is the same answer we got when we recognize it as our special case. So we continue on. Absolute value is not by itself on the left. There's this plus 3. So I can't start evaluating this and breaking it into two different um, equations until I get absolute value by itself. So before I even start, I have to say move 3 over absolute value is greater than or equal to 6. Now I'm actually ready to evaluate this and I'm breaking it into two equations or inequalities. 2, 12 minus 6x is greater than or equal to 6. One exactly the same without the bar. And the second one is going to be flip the sign and make it a negative. Okay? And now we're solving these two inequalities. Don't forget your rules for inequalities. When you divide both sides of a neg by a negative, you must flip this inequality symbol. That was from the last lesson. So x is greater than or equal to 1. We're going to come up over here, solve this one. Uh, negative 18. Uh, divide both sides by a negative. We have to flip the sign over here as well. And divide both sides by a negative. We flip. So that would give us x is greater than or equal to negative 18 divided by negative 6 is a positive 3. Now a couple of things to remember. This equal to sign means it's a bracket. So I have a 1 and I have a 3 that I'm working with. So on my number line, let's say that's 1. This is 3. They have to be in order. Now, this is greater than 1. X is greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1. It's going to be this. X is greater than... Oh, I didn't come back over here. What did I not do? I said to flip. I said to flip, but then I turned around and did not. So that's going to be x is less than or equal to 1. Okay? I hope you caught that. I had to flip this one. So x is less than or equal to 1. Let me regraph it. x is less than or equal to 1. which is going to be this way, and then for the 3, 
that says x is greater than or equal to 3. It's going to be a bracket on the 3 headed this way. The original problem port points to the right, so it's an or. And or says if it was ever colored on, it's part of the answer. So I named this side first, which is negative infinity to 1 with a bracket. I have a gap right here, so I represent that with a u. I have a bracket 3 to infinity.